Hey, welcome. First episode of our On the Bench what? podcast and video. Uh, it's going to obviously be a take on, uh, pardon the interruption, but with a little broomball twist, uh, we've modified well, it. Obviously, you recognize uh, the crazy man on the other side of me here, Matt Street. Why would they recognize me? Your beautiful face that for your podcast. A face for podcasts. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, they're not, not supposed to be streamed like this. This is a bad deal. <laughs> well, so kind of the way this will work is we'll just, uh, if you don't know, pardon the inter- interruption, we run through some topics in a, in a time frame so that way we can keep on and keep moving on. It leaves us the opportunity to get in what we want to say, but then leaves time leaving for more content later on. Street, you ready to take on the, the first topic? Yeah, the, the quick fire, quick. PTI version. I like it. Let's go. All right, so we've got a lot to catch up with. So starting here, our uh, Riverside Classic. <laughs> a little bit Three ago. Yeah, yeah. Just a couple months back. We got a couple months back. So Medics won the Riverside Classic. Uh, mm-hmm. If you can remember back, you know, what were your thoughts on the tournament with oh, them winning that one? Um, you know. First, first time out. I, maybe not their first time out, but first time that everyone got to see him. And wow, electric, a uh, lot of speed. And it's going to take people a while to get used to that. Um, I was going to say, yeah, I definitely remember it. Uh, lost to him, so uh, yeah, uh, you know, it's a, they're going to be they're going to be a lot to deal with this entire season. New team on the block. Yeah, and if you remember, I'm just looking at our uh, what people can't see at home is we have our little cheat sheets we make. Nice. For all our tournaments, uh, Medex ended up going in the tournament uh, four and one uh, with 15 goals for and four against. The championship game against Minnesota Chiefs was four nothing. So if you remember, the semifinal though was a three two uh, game in overtime against Kelly Lake. I think that's their new rival this year, the Kelly Lake Medex rival. Same Augsburg league there. Yeah. Well, and they even well, uh, they even just played each other. Uh, which uh, in league, which we can get to later on, but um, you know, in just thinking of that, you know, Medex won that tournament. Uh, another kind of surprise run, maybe might have been that Northern Invasion team uh, run mm-hmm. by our buddy Dane. Yeah, way to go, Dano. Hey, wait, hold on. How many teams? Did, how many names does that team have? How many names does Dane have for his teams well, that he's on or runs or? A lot of names. Yeah, he's changed it a bunch. You know, it was Fighting Saints, and then it was, I don't know. It's Northern Invasion now because they have legit jerseys. I did get yeah. one, but uh, you know how I like to collect those. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so they the Northern Invasion uh, is now the team name. It was Fighting Saints. It was other stuff. I don't even remember. Blitzkrieg. That was my favorite. Blitzkrieg. Oh, yeah. Go back to that. I want that jersey. I, When's the Blitzkrieg jersey come out? Well, uh, you'll have to talk to Dane. Uh, obviously, mm-hmm. they're using the Broomball Central jersey sponsor to, to get those done, so maybe he can get a discount on that. There you go. Uh, so they, they went 2-2 two and two in the tournament, but they actually played pretty well and made it to uh, the semis, ended up playing the Chiefs. Uh, it wasn't a close game. It was 7-3 to three, uh, in score, but it sounds like it was a, maybe a little closer and just some defensive mishaps on their end. Uh, some defensive mishaps, yeah, with a seven. There'd have to be at least one. <laughs> <laughs> one or two. I, yeah. Uh, speaking of those guys, I'd kind of, you know, they got, they're got a bunch of up-and-coming guys, guys from a split team. I would like to see their goalie maybe uh, try a blocker at some point. Ah. Uh, so moving on to the next topic, uh, we're looking at Swanson. So is he going to stay with Medex? I thought they're- I thought Corey Swanson was going to retire this year. <laughs> I think we. I think I've literally heard that every year I've <laughs> known who Corey Swanson was. He gets in your mind. He gets in your mind playing those mind games. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it's if it's any indicator, obviously you can see from the picture above, which we'll talk about next, that Canada Cup he just went up and won. But uh, Corey's still the most dominant goalie. Without a doubt. In the league, I mean, yeah. obviously Shrugs is is not too far behind, but. Uh, I feel like he has a little. I, bit more I will of venture the... to say in the sport. Well, yeah, I haven't I mean, seen much. I haven't. I, I haven't seen better. I, I know there's a couple guys up there in Canada that would would get close to town that, but man, he is good. The thing with Corey is that you, he never has an off game. Right. 
So it's hard to, you know, whatever team he's on clearly has an advantage. So that being said, if he's no longer with MedX, what does that mean for MedX? Uh, I mean, yeah, he's he's a game-changing goalie, but uh, they're a real good team. I mean, that, that will be a hit, but they can still be uh, – they'll still be right at the top with or without him, in my opinion. They got a lot of speed. There's not a lot of – yeah, there's there's not a lot to uh, to change up with what they got going. Missing Corey, it'll hurt a little bit, but not going to make a gigantic difference. Yeah, I mean, from playing them, you know, we've played them with our team, and I played them with Seven on Kelly Lake now, and 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 other times. Yeah, speed is definitely a factor. They remind me of when remember when the Chiefs uh, first started and they split off from Barry's. Mm -hmm. Oh my yeah. God. The type Speed. of pressure they just they just relentlessly go at you. Yep, you got those Stanton boys on there with MedX saying little young bloods running around. It's a nightmare to deal with. And I, you know, and I will say, even you know personally, you know, uh, Wyatt and I had maybe a little not a good start to our broomball relationship starting out, but I I've liked to see. I've, you know, you've seen some maturity and some growth in him, not only as a, a broomball player, clearly, but it, uh, even how he handles himself on and off the ice. It's been fun to see. Yeah, needs to happen. Yeah, yep. I mean, obviously, the sport is working towards a way where I think we're transitioning out of an older uh, brute mentality, you know, the guys who used to play checking and whatnot, into more right. of a skilled based. Uh, we talk about finesse broomball here. I do love finesse broomball. Finesse broomball. Uh, yeah. you, you know, it's working towards something that we're building on, and it's becoming more of a community. I think Broomball Central obviously has helped quite a bit with that. Uh, I would hope so. Yeah. Uh, but the 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 togetherness is starting to develop, which is fun to see. Are you talking about Broomball Family? Broomball <laughs> Family. Well, speaking of Broomball Family, that's a good transition because. We brought a group of Americans up to the Canada Cup uh, who, well, yeah, we may have won yeah. that one. Way to go, guy. So, yeah, Team yeah. Kelly uh, yeah. Lake wins uh, the Canada Wait, Cup. On. That wasn't thine. I know that was on the jersey, but that wasn't the name. I'm just reading the title on the screen as I it see it. It was the Eagles. Wow. Well, yes. Okay, so the Eagles. What did the Eagles make up of, uh, of teams? Uh, Chiefs, MedX, Legion. Kelly Lake, um, yeah, I don't know. There's more. There's a lot in there. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. Fun to bring a, a team of you know top five uh, ranking teams into a tournament and go play. I know. What did I miss? A team? Was there five teams? Six teams? There's a lot of teams. All the teams. Sounds like a hashtag. Someone's left out. Yeah. It was a. Uh, it was a real good time. It was a real good time. Yeah, and 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 thinking of that tournament. Uh, what were your impressions of, you know, this was my first trip into Canada. I, I believe it was yours as well. Uh, mm -hmm. What was your impression of that? I didn't like paying that $10 to get into that ring. I'm still <laughs> a little sore about that. Um, but, uh, you know, the Ottawa Nationals were unbelievable hosts. Um, Joe Keeley did a great job, ran a great tournament. Uh, we got to film it the whole weekend when we were up there. Had a hell of a time uh, when I was there really don't have any complaints definitely go back yeah it was run wasn't as miserable as i you know i expected to walk up into the white tundra and it'd just be absolutely terrible you, you know we went a decent time of year and it was it was great great time yeah the weather obviously turned out to be all right uh yeah. while we were there we had a great time at the hotel sure did uh, <laughs> yeah we'll we'll skip that conversation for an yeah. off-air time but uh the tournament was run run very well uh, it was fun to see the, the level of competition be so equal. Um, I'm also obviously impartial to certain rules, uh, but knowing we went into a tournament with Canadian rules, international rules, uh, it was fun to see the level of competition and the equality between all the teams there. Yeah, it was pretty great. Got to meet a lot of great people. Um, saw the uh, U.S. women's team do a fantastic job up there up north and uh yeah saw a lot of great broomball a lot of great broomball we got to meet a bunch of people including the the grant dawson of canada uh yep. he and our friend sheila uh who we might have to censor on the next time she calls a game <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> we might have off to censor. the rails off the apologize to everybody uh, 
she does a fantastic job. She, I, I, she I, did a fantastic job. The classic line of the weekend was when uh, Foreman decided to shoot uh, the shootout shot from the dot, and she decided to just boop. Nice little uh, yeah. expletive there. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course she did. So uh, transitioning here, uh, we're moving on to the Mid-Atlantic Tournament. Now, this tournament, uh, you know, the biggest question, you know, is this the biggest tournament outside of Minnesota? No. Maybe. They did a great they did a great job. Um, they had some uh, the filming was fantastic. They streamed it. Uh, I think I think they even got to two rinks at times on Facebook and YouTube. Um, I think it's only their second year, but I don't think it's the big – it's up between them. As of right now, it's between them and uh, I'd say Syracuse for biggest tourney. And Syracuse is making a push with this year coming up. So um, now that Syracuse tourney has moved to two rinks, different facility, bar in the rink, it's going to be, yeah, you know. it's. A, I guess that Syracuse is a different tier of tournament. Mm -hmm. um, but they now Syracuse offers a CD also. So um, I am my vote's going for Syracuse right now with the Mid-Atlantic as a close number two. Yeah, and I would I would agree with you. You know, not and and we're taking level of competition aside, right? We're looking at uh, mm -hmm. equality of the tournament. We're looking at the facility. We're looking at uh, teams available. Who goes? All that. Uh, clearly, they're running a great thing. Uh, and for a newer program, it's pretty impressive. Uh, Very impressive. Yeah. So they they they're they're running things well there now. DC legislators. Ended up winning that tournament. Uh, mm -hmm. We we know they had some help with some add-ons, and we have uh, we made tournament like that. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of extras that that come through, and you get some assists for sure. But um, a couple teams did that. Uh, there was a lot of good broom bowlers out there that weekend. Mm -hmm. But yeah, not not your typical uh, nationals DC legislator mm -hmm. squad. Big shout out to Joe and uh, company there for that one. Uh, what are what are your thoughts on on I know we, I've, I've talked to Joe a couple times about tournaments where he tries to go to and and kind of get some flack for trying to go to those because he's quote unquote stacking a team. What are your what are your opinions on 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 A B players playing in those in those tournaments? Uh, I mean, I don't think it hurts. I mean, you get to see some top level competition. You get to play against some good guys. Um, I know everyone wants to go to a tournament that they can win, but you know you have to put in the work to I guess do that. We've had this conversation over and over again over the years. Like you have to take your licks, yep. Um, and to do that, you have to play higher end competition. You get better, you get better, and then before you know it, you're the top D level team. You're the top C level team. You're B. Now you're finally playing an A. Like whatever your peak is, is what you should shoot for. And if that's it, that's it. You know, if you're the highest you're ever going to get is a top C level team, then. You fulfilled, you know, a great goal. Like, stay there and try to, like, be consistent with that. Well, um, yeah, and it's fun to see when you're in those tournaments and you're, you're growing and developing, it's fun to play teams that have some good players, but you still feel like mm -hmm. you can compete against. You know, you don't want yeah, to yeah. go there and be like, yeah. crap, I'm going to get yeah. my, my butt kicked in this one. Yeah, there's always, there's learning moments. Yep. Um, yep. I'm certain, yeah, from in every tournament, and the better players you have, you'll have, you have a lot bigger opportunity to uh, see those players and what they're capable of and how you can mimic some of the things that they do. So kind of taking that into account, we're talking about Europe. Team USA uh, Europe, wins yeah. again. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they win both in the men's and the co-rec side. Yeah, across the pond, uh, it's a big win. Amazing, amazing tournament. Um, I don't know if you saw the live streams of that. A couple of our good friends recorded out there for Broomball Central. Uh, the the facility they had there was probably the best facility I've seen since uh, maybe what year was that? Fourteen Nationals. We played at the University of Miami. Mm -hmm. That was fantastic. Um, they had like light shows at halftime. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the rink was huge. Uh, like it was the and uh, that those that championship game, which I think is Broomball Central's like most viewed. Uh, to date on Facebook, yeah. yeah. Um, most viewed to date that had, I mean, it looked like there was a thousand people plus in that crowd, like it was crazy. And it sounded like it was a pretty ruckus crowd as well, yeah. Yeah, I was bl I was blown away when I tuned into that and watched. And I mean, my jaw just kind of hit the ground. Um, 
<laughs> I want to go to the European Championship. Uh, that was going to be my Thank follow-up you. question. Do you want to go sometime? I, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I need to get back to Europe anyway, and this is an excuse. So, yeah. Um, when is it? Sign me yeah. up. I know. Yeah, every, every two years, I think. Uh, sure. The cool aspect of that tournament, tying back in not only to those who volunteered to film it, record it so we could see that, know that there's Broomball across the pond, is the fact that, you know, Broomball Central has kind of tied the world together where we may not have even have known about that tournament a few years ago. I just gave it an outlet. Um, what, who we have? We had Cindy Murphy and uh, Caitlin Carlin out there, mm-hmm. and they filmed kind of, They filmed a couple games. I watched four or five that they filmed, and uh, there was a shootout, uh, and they somebody was right behind the net and got that. And um, yeah, just now that you don't have to search all over for, for it, you can just go to that one place. It's like, oh, sweet, it's here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it just gave me an opportunity. And um, th- I mean, this is I guess this is the thought has always been the vision. Is like if you see it, you want to be a part of it. And I want to go the Europe. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean the the way they presented it and the way it was run, it was it looked pretty spectacular. Inc- looked yeah. pretty incredible. Um, yep. And I need to go out there and find if it's the best tournament in the world. Yeah, I need to find out. <laughs> no doubt. Yes, it sure did look like it. Hey, tournament directors across the seas, we're looking at you. Get yeah. us an invite. <laughs> Get yeah. us an invite. We'll come. Uh, we'll come promote it uh, the professional way on our end. Yeah, yeah, we'll do the best we can. We'll film it. Just need to pick that plane ticket up for old dad. <laughs> uh, maybe a hotel or two. We'll we'll yeah, combine yeah. rooms so then it you know perks. save money. Yeah, save money. Where's the next one? Let's uh let's get it back in Italy or it was Italy, France. Where can we go uh, next? Italy, please. Can we just have this in Rome? I'd be fine. <laughs> That's where it was last time. Uh, sticking with uh, another non-American tournament, Biquette's Cup. Aha! The Paquette's Cup. Our good friend Alex Peralt runs that tourney. Uh, he runs the website with Quebec Broomball. He does a whole lot. He is uh, hes the Broomball Central of the North, this Alex Peralt guy. What a guy. What a guy. And, you know, talking with Alex, and I know you've talked to him more than I have, but Canada is actually, you know, how they're divided up. Um, you know, mm-hmm. when they commit at the beginning of the year, they're either they're committing to a team and they stick with them the rest of the year. Uh, right. You know, Alex was saying he's they're seeing more and more push for players playing in those co-rec tournaments uh, due to non-checking. Mm-hmm. Do you uh, you know I have I have my opinions on this. You know, what are your thoughts on checking in tournaments and the future of that within Broomball? Uh. No, I'm not a huge fan of checking because um, obviously we're in the business with Broomball Central of filming games, and we want excitement. We want finesse. Like we want to see lots of goals. The Canadian Broomball game right now does not produce a lot of goals. Um, I think there may be a room for checking, but it needs to be it needs to be implemented in a way that allows for a more free flowing game. The game seems to me having played in Canada Cup and Worlds, the two only checking tournaments, so I'm not uh, an expert on the subject. But having watched a ton of Broomball, checking now, um, yeah, really slows the game down and it limits the type of game that can be played. Well, the- and it limits it limits a lot of the higher-end players' abilities on the ice to see their electricity. Big guy I think so- of is Johnny Broomball, right? When we, when we were at Canada Cup, essentially yep. eliminated. And when we think of him down... Here in a non-checking uh, scores one or two every game. Finesse based. Yeah. I mean, the guy is electric, and um, yeah, it, it takes away from that. You know, the small nets is clearly something that it will eliminate scoring. Um, the red line is, it, is a, so it's, it's another another thing where you and I actually disagree. I, I I'm a big floating blue line guy. I I, I think yeah. it pr- promotes more fast breaks, more opportunity to break in. I know you're kind of partial between red and blue. Uh, yeah, to me, it's not like, I mean, there's going to have to be a little give and take if we're ever, ever going to get the rules on the same page. Um, and that, to me, like, wouldn't be the fight. The fight would be checking. And honestly, I think there might be, a, you know, there might be a way to implement checking to where there can be at a high level. I mean, that's kind of the thought, having checking at a high level, because, hey, you have, you know, the most physical, capable guys, like, there should be some checking involved. 
just like you know but look what the nhl has done over the years like they've toned it toned it more and more back so you get more excitement it's the same thing in broomball yeah i mean like, the, the biggest example i can see is in broomball you know <laughs> my first shift in that tournament uh i flipped a ball into the zone and then within about five seconds after flipping it thinking i'm safe i start running and i got absolutely waxed right and i'm thinking right. like whoa i had the ball five seconds ago how can i still get hit well, and that's you know so it all i saw was i saw a ton of interference like that was the the mindset watching that game is like that's interference and that's interference like checking can happen but where is the line between checking and interference and i think that's slowing the game down and i think that needs to be fixed to propel broomball to a, a a possible market out there right now i don't think there's much of a market for it with that type of game yeah yeah, and that's, but that's that's upper echelon broomball too, yep. and that's what you need to be very visible and very like appealing. Yeah, and this right is now, obviously a topic that we'll probably continue to hit on. Uh, switching to something a little different, you know, MedX, uh, the Meg released its poll a little while ago. We're a little late to the game here. Um, MedX pulls out though. MedX finished number one. Um, sure. Which yeah. which makes sense based on yeah. how their results have gone. Uh, you know, this year I have totaled here. Medex in tournaments is eleven and four with forty two goals for and thirteen against. So that's a plus twenty nine goal differential. Right. A lot of Medex talk here. Well, I mean, when you win two of three tournaments at the beginning of the yeah. year, you kind of get the the gist of the talk. So. Um, I think Chris got underneath your skin. I think you're just trying to make Chris happy here on this deal. Oh well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you had enough. You had enough to say the other tournament about that. Yeah. Sure. Um, so the real question is, you know, we talked about Corey earlier. Uh, imagine Corey's gone, as everyone speculates that he'll go back to CNL. Mm -hmm. Can MedX stay in the top five? You know, they're competing with a Kelly Lake, the Minnesota Chiefs. Uh, top five in the what? In the U.S. In the U.S. Yeah. Yeah. You think top five? Yeah, without a doubt. Where, I mean, where in the top five would you put them at the end of the year then? They're, I mean, right now they're still number one. It's hard to argue like with I, results. Yeah, I mean, who? What's going to change? They're just they're they're a new team. I just see things getting better. A little, but I mean, th being a new team, teams will probably like figure some things mm -hmm. out, develop some strategies. You know, get a little game film on them. Um, happens. That's how it works. But uh, at the same time, that also gives them more time to become a better team. And they're traveling. They're going to Syracuse, you know. Um, they're uh, playing in every tournament back there. Like, they're they're a young team, and they're excited. They're fresh. They're feeling good. Yeah. Like, uh, they're they're my – I've got them at number one at the end of the year. They're the team to knock off. We just played them uh, – I, I played with Kelly Lake during league play at Augsburg, and we just played them uh, on a Friday night. Uh, mm -hmm. Ended up losing to them in overtime. Uh Two to one, they scored on a power play goal there, but uh, they were ready to go. They had their whole yeah. squad. Everyone showed up. We showed up with yeah. our seven guys, <laughs> and they See? were ready to party. Yeah, yeah, probably practicing out there in the parking lot. They're fired up. Team to beat. Well, and, and what's more fun than a team that's young, athletic, quick, and wants to show up and play the sport that we all love. It, it sounds like a nightmare. It sounds like a nightmare. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> and, and, and to be honest, you know, the game was pretty clean. Everyone just fought hard. And that's that's what I enjoy seeing in Broomball. We talk about the skilled game. We yeah. talk about guys playing hard. Hard is fine as long as you're playing within yeah. the, in the rules. Uh, and I think the transition with those guys, maybe from the beginning of the year, getting a little scrappy, uh, to start just focusing on themselves in the game has helped quite a bit. Yeah, obvious. Uh, now, something that's kind of new, you know, we like to switch around topics here. Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about equipment? We're going to talk about equipment. So I like equipment. Blue Ox came out with, uh, I was very fortunate enough to work with Jim to kind of try this thing out for a while based on a stick end that I have. Uh, modifications to equipment. So the first one that they came out with here was called the Trigger. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a it's a stick end that allows for more leverage and and, and holding it on the stick. Uh, How do you not have one of these right now, right next to you? I don't. Yeah, I I, I don't have one because I. This is a video. You need yeah, your stick. Yeah, I didn't prepare for that because I bought three and gave them all away. <laughs> tell that tell that dog there to go get the stick in. Well, you can't see the dog because she's cut off. It's a the retriever. Screen. Well, it's, it's a retriever over there. Go get yeah. it. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, well, she's <laughs> laying down and not moving. Yeah. Uh, now, I, I've played my whole career with a stick end, such as the trigger. Um, and I know you, you experiment with tons of different uh, equipment modifications. You, you cut your, your mask. You play with uh, football lineman gloves. Uh, yeah. Tell us about all the stuff that you've done. Well, I just a terrible, terrible broom ball player just trying to figure it out. It's all it's ever been. It's like, man, how can uh, not be terrible anymore? Okay, let's put some lineman gloves on because I never played hockey. So all this is foreign. Um, I never played on, you know, that plane and uh, anything I could get my hands on to make it easier. Um, lineman gloves, you know, get that mask out of the way. I don't know how people look through that thing. Jesus, I go, I go cross-eyed when I try to look through that mask. It's terrible. So, um but yeah, I need to see this stick in. I don't even know what you're talking about. Where can you buy them? Well, so there's a limited run right now. I know Andy at Instant Replay here in the city's had a few, but I pretty much bought them. And then what's the benefit? What's the benefit of the stick in? So that specific stick in, when you're holding on to it, you can do a lot easier uh, stick in and control of the ball. Uh, one-handed shots, your specialty, uh, make it really nice when you open up your arm and and, and swing. This sounds like those axe bats. You ever heard of, seen those axe bats? Yeah, so there's – you know how they, they have a lacrosse axe stick end? It's kind of like mm-hmm. that, but it's a, it's slightly different. Um, I get it. It just adds more leverage. You, you hold it in your hand, and it connects to your, your pinky, right. and it allows a constant grip on the stick. I, I've had other people try uh, – there it goes. Now you can see the dog take off. Yeah. Uh, I've tried other people try this, this stick end, and, and, and a bunch of people wanted to buy them, so yeah. – it's going to be successful, and it's kind of fun to see that because you wonder what is next. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because Blue Ox is, is constantly developing. There's, you know, D-Gel, Acacia, and hopefully by doing that, we're going to encourage more development within the sport of broomball. Obviously, yeah. the biggest thing is cost. Yep. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I, I, uh, you've been trying to get me on these stick ends forever. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Mike it probably you. would definitely help. I could see it definitely helping a defender. Being able to hold that stick out there and having a little little extra on the side of the hand. I mean, that's just mathematics. Yeah. Yeah, so we are on to the final shift here. Uh, Woo! Four topics in a minute. You ready? Let's do this. Sure. So the what, top what? ten, do you agree with the order? Can't remember the order off the top of my bat, but I remember when I saw it, I was good with it. Okay. Made a lot of sense. Well, you know, I very, I very rarely disagree with a mag. Every once in a blue moon, I'll have something to throw out there, but he's got his finger on the pulse. I think he knows what he's talking and about. And early tournaments. That's how it goes. ABL 2020, who's going to win? Uh, it's been berries every year. No longer has the berries in it. Oh, wow. Uh, my boy DC runs that league. Dave, big Dave Carroll. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Chiefs. All right, I'm going with Kelly because yeah. that's the team. Go, that's the team I play on. <laughs> yeah, go Dave, go DC now. Games of the week. Yep. What leagues will be available? Oh, um, well, there's there's a couple. So uh, Augsburg did one. Theirs is on uh, Friday. Blaine does theirs on Thursday. Um, there's a couple leagues available for Sunday. Uh, Charm City Broomball is talking about doing Tuesdays. So is um, Alex up in Quebec. We might get some uh, Canadian games on Tuesdays. Uh, anybody out there that's listening to this that wants to film their league, um, we're trying to get games every night of the week, say 7, 8 o'clock, um, and uh, you, you just live stream them on Facebook Live, and um, so it gives me something to do at 8 and o'clock. If we can if, figure it out early, we can get a schedule out there. One last yeah, yeah. thing here. What does, uh, you know, last couple tournaments, we had a new writer writing into into Broomball Central, created a little bit of buzz. We haven't heard from him lately. What does is, what is something like that do for the Broomball community? It's fantastic. Need more of them. Um, wish I knew who it was so I could text him every day. Hey, you going to write another article for this tourney? Um, we had, what, what was the last tourney that he didn't write one for? I believe the last one, the previous tournament that we were just oh. in. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Need. I mean, anybody want to write some articles? Go to a tournament, write a short article. We'll put it on Broomball Central. Um, people love reading this stuff. So if you have any abilities to write, which I do not, um, could desperately use you putting in. You don't have to put your name on it. You can put it as anonymous. Um, and we will honor that. We will honor the yeah, anonymous. Yeah, we'll honor, yep. um, yeah, we'll honor. Yeah, even if we knew who we were, we wouldn't. I don't release my sources. Sources, I'm not a snitch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, I can uh, get a get a bunch of people. Ah. And then, you know, and the next thing with that, you know, in closing here, uh, we will have segments where we want you to write in. So if if it, if that's something that you're interested in and you think I have a question, I, I have a comment on something, let us know. Email us at broomballcentral at gmail dot com and uh, we'll take a look. Matt, anything yeah. else to close? No, I got nothing. I'm ready, I'm ready to get out of here now. All right, well, from both of us and our final shift here on the bench, uh, we'll see you next time. You've got an outro and everything. (laughs) I worked on it. (laughs)